guys, very nice to see Cape Buffalo, the most dangerous animal in Africa, out here on the plains. They've just come out of the Kumifra scrub and now they've gone onto the plain and they're a little bit vulnerable, but it's at least about 10 or so really strong bulls. And uh, it's very, very hard for a, a lion or even a pride of lion to kind of separate one. They stick together, these guys. Called Dugger Boys, and uh, you don't mess around with these guys. guys welcome back to Serengeti show live as you can see we've moved location from Ndutu a little bit north and we're at Nabi hill very distinctive hill out here on the plains and it's also where the main gate is and where all permits and things are sorted out our camp is right there next to the rock there and we've just had so many lion uh, all around our camp you know not getting much sleep so for us it's great that it's daytime, you know, we can, we feel so much better during the day. We're going to try and show you all the action around this hill. We'll go out onto the plains and do a migration update a little bit later and uh, enjoy Nabi Hill. It's all happening here at the moment. It was a long night for us at camp. Lions were very lo vocal and uh, this one is doing his territory and he's been sniffing all the lion poo down the road. Lions generally don't like wet grass so if you go out early in the morning they should be on the road and that's why we are here now just north of Nabi Gate where our camp is and uh, this is the bugger that has kept us awake the whole night. Let's show, it, show him to you. It looks like he's got a little bit of a limp the front right foot and uh, let's see what's wrong with him looks like he wants to go into the gully but luckily we can follow him a little bit let's follow him again we have our off-road papers but we won't go too far we just want to show you this bugger that has kept us up the whole night very preoccupied at the moment with marking territory and sniffing. I'll we'll just get a little bit ahead of him. And then we'll see. He's in good condition. We'll have a look what's wrong with that foot of his. not very comfortable he's probably not in his territory or he might be on the edge of his territory but there's so many seas marking his territory there with urine spraying it on the bush and then scraping with his hind legs 
at the moment there are just so many lion here we are surrounded by lion you know three lionesses of which two have cubs and the third one is mating with another male that we saw him which is not this one this one looks a little bit weary and he's obviously outnumbered a bit now let's see what where he'll be heading not 100% comfortable and uh, it looks like he was in a bit of a scrap with uh, the other male so let's go see if we can get a little bit closer without disturbing him too much but he's keeping a very good eye on us so he might give us a little warning growl but uh, that, that's to be expected Again, I'm not going straight towards him, going parallel with him. Just trying to get you a better look. There's a little bit of an infection in his right eye, so he must have had a scrub. Just switch off the car. Get him to relax a little. Okay, I'm gonna bring out the camera. Let's see if we can have a close shot of his eyes. Just slow movement, he's watching everything we are doing. Hi everybody, welcome back to Camp Life and today I'm going to show you how do we shower in our camp. Welcome! Oh, this is our shower. As you can see, we have a drum on top. There we put water so that somebody can shower. But it seems like somebody is inside showering now. Hey! Oh, wow! <laughs> As you can see, there are someone is taking shower now so in this drum we put water and then when you are in we actually recommend it recommend you to tap the tap on and then you get some water and then you take your soap or shampoo you put on your body and then you start brushing yourself and you tap it off then when you finish you can tap it on again for rinsing and then you'll be ready this is because in the bush Water is complicated. We need to serve water as much as we can. Thank you. 
and I also want to show you our toilet or our loo in this green tent here is where is our toilet is and we have a small mountain toilet which is portable you can carry it and I'm gonna show you how it works so here you can see you can come and after you sit here you need after you finish you have to flush so you pull this button up like this then the water will come in then when you finish you have to pull this one and then you pull it back then the thing will be done okay again i will actually show you how do we boil our water for taking shower someone is showering now but now is afternoon hours the water is actually warm but if it's cold we have to boil water so that everybody can shower with warm water and feel nicely okay so here is our small boiler with the pipe at the middle so we put in this pipe at the middle we put our wood and then besides the pipe here is where we put our water and then after we heat it up then after half an hour your water will be boiled and then after you come up here in this step you put your bucket and you tap it on then you get hot water ready to take it up to the shower area so that everybody can start showering with the hot water thank you and enjoy hey guys we caught up with this male that's busy patrolling his territory again and you can see he's got a limp on the right front leg and marking his territory as he goes and he's going to lead us to perhaps more lions or another male we'll come out the dip just now He's holding his injured foot up whenever he can, it's the front right one. Might even be a shoulder. You can see there's a, not a lot of muscle at the behind his right shoulder and it means that there's definitely an injury there. You can see how stiff his spine is that is support to support all the weight he's carrying and you can also see how much of his weight he's carrying in his front quarters. And you can see that void of muscle just be behind his front shoulder. Good weight on his front right leg, so he's definitely limp. He wants to come to the road. Let's give him a bit of space. You'll see he's marking his territory. Let's try and make it a bit easier for him.
guys. Migration update time and we all we drove all the way to the eastern plains. So we ride on the eastern edge of the Serengeti and we bumped into the eastern herds. And you will see these herds, very few babies, very few youngsters. So this is far more the bachelor herds. Generally these guys go up to Kenya a lot quicker up the eastern side of the Serengeti. The moment they're heading south again, don't know why, but uh, tomorrow they might go north again. So you can see slow movement. You can see Nabi Hill where we came from, far in the distance. Gold copies over this side. And uh, Lamutu Hill is just on the other side of the vehicle. And Nasero Rock is just on that side. So we are right on the e eastern edge of the Serengeti. Nice to see the herds. Have a look. at Gold Copies. This is just northeast of Nabi, where our camp is. And these little granite outcrops are so important for the ecosystem. It holds water in the dry season and there's so much life around these copies. There's almost always something around. Quite a few of them, so they're scattered all over the plains here. The eastern plains of the Serengeti and uh, Let's have a look what we can find. So these granite copies break up in smaller pieces erosion but mainly water that goes down the cracks and then it expands and retracts and expands and retracts and then you can see the cracks forming obviously over a very long period of time. As you can see here at Gold Copies how important these granite copies are. It holds water. You can see you think there's nothing out there. It must be dry but it holds water a lot longer than it should be. And it also gives a chance for trees to root and grow. And there's a beautiful fig tree. Must be a, a rock fig ficus. And um, tree of life. I mean, this tree here uh, just feeds so many things and there's so much that's dependent on the shade and the shelter. You can see all the vulture droppings that's on the rocks there, so it's definitely used for by many, many things. Beautiful tree.
guys, we're out here on the Eastern Plains, very close to Barafu Kopis, and it's quite nice to see Batelier feeding off something on the ground. They actually spend quite a bit of time on the ground. They also lie back and oil their wings, and uh, nice to see a Batelier out here. Almost no trees in sight, but they're such good flyers that uh, there's plenty for them to eat out here. And uh, they're named after acrobats, French name Batelier. And you can just see how well they fly. Very short tail, and you can see the wings dipping left, right, left, right. And that's where the name Acrobat or Batelier comes from. Stunning to see. Hi there kiddies, welcome to Kids Corner. So we're out here on the Serengeti Plains and we've noticed something. We always or mostly see zebra and wildebeest walk together. Why do you think it's that? Hmm. You know, in the animal world, you either stick together because it's beneficial for you guys, for both parties, or you have something that's living off something else. That will be a parasitism. But here we have a symbiotic relationship. That's a big word. I know, try that in the morning. Um, so, luckily, for wildebeest, zebra are very alert. Big ears and they generally pick up predators and that's coming closer a little bit sooner than the wildebeest. Then, they have completely different diets. Zebra has a very good digestive system. That is to process all the grass that they are eating in their stomach. So, generally you will have zebra grazing first into the long tall grass. And that grazing and the hoofs that's trampling on the grass, that will encourage new growth. And then the wildebeest come after the zebra and they eat on the short new grass right at the bottom. So everybody's happy. Everybody's staying safe and the one is helping the other one produce food. So that is quite interesting, a bit of a mouthful, but uh, next time you see wildebeest and zebra together, you know why. Watch again tomorrow for another Kids Corner, guys. Okay, guys, very nice to see Cape Buffalo, the most dangerous animal in Africa, out here on the plains. They've just come out of the Mifra scrub and now they've gone onto the plane and they uh, a little bit vulnerable but it's at least about 10 or so really strong bulls and uh, it's very very hard for a, a lion or even a pride of lion to kind of separate one they stick together these guys called dagger boys and uh, you don't mess around with these guys very good to see them out here very few buffalo in the Serengeti about 50 years or 70 years ago and they tell you the health of the ecosystem and I must say in the last kind of few years we've bumped into massive herds of buffalo so it's really going well with the Serengeti well done to the conservation guys and uh, herds of 700 800 buffalo at the moment in the Serengeti Okay guys, we're going to leave them and they'll probably disappear back into the thickets where they're not so vulnerable and uh, heading back to camp. It's like they've relaxed quite a bit but be heading to where they feel a little more safer, some woodland and thick Kumifra shrub that helps to protect them from lion. Lion is almost the only thing that can bring a buffalo bull down. A 
smelt us there. You now the wind is going to them. And uh, our smell is just too much for them to bear. Alright, another day. Okay guys, we bumped into what we earlier saw today, a zebra that wasn't doing really well and it fell over all by itself. Now the vultures are having a feast. The Serengeti in Tanzania is a safe haven for a lot of the vulture species that are vulnerable and endangered. So at the moment we have all the species there and except the hooded vulture. You will see that the, the big vulture with the ivory beak and spots on its wings, that's a Rupel's griffin vulture. Then there's another really big one that's dark um, with a red head, that's a lappet faced vulture. Then there are some dullish ones and there's, those are the white backed vultures and they're all having a tussle there and he's eating. There's plenty of meat for them, a whole zebra and it's unbelievable how quickly they finish that zebra up. They are keystone species, very important for the ecosystem. And if you look at the Mara River um, during the crossing season, the Mara Bustalk and the vultures play a very crucial role in cleaning up the, the ecosystem. It's a lovely sighting. We don't want to bother them, but it looks like they have enough trouble amongst themselves at the moment. The red head, and that's why vultures don't have feathers on their neck stick in their, their heads under the skin and pick out all the meat and flesh that's in the carcass. And you will see that the Rupel's vulture will open their wings and walk closer and make themselves bigger to uh, assert their presence on the kill. The leopard face are actually even larger but they're a little bit more skittish so um, they could probably stand their ground against the Rupel's vulture, but they seldom do. Okay guys, lovely place for vulture identification. And the Gaul Mountains to the east of us is a very, very important breeding ground for the Rupel's griffin. They need cliffs and they need high ground for them to breed. If they don't have that, they don't breed at all. Amazing to see them land. Yeah, they're coming all in now. It's incredible. They come from far and wide. At the moment, they they see other vultures flying. They go and have a look. And close to our camp, on those acacia trees, there's nesting, especially the leopard faced and the white back vultures. The Rupel's vultures, like I said, they need the cliffs. Okay guys, we're gonna head back to camp. It's a long day out here on the Eastern Plains, but it's an unbelievable day. So beautiful. A huge amount of migratory wildebeest and zebra. But that's it for the day. Let's see what the sunset will do from camp and uh, hope you enjoyed it.